Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. My name is Tyra Haig, and I'm the Director of News and Information here at UT. And on behalf of the university, the Tennessee Department of Education, and Knox County Schools, we are thrilled to host each of you and want to extend a big orange welcome to all of our guests and dignitaries. As for the media, I'd like to provide a rundown of speakers for today's press conference. In order, Tennessee Department of Education Commissioner Penny Schwinn will be the first to speak, followed by Knox County Schools Superintendent Bob Thomas, and then Ellen McIntyre, Dean of UT's College of Education, Health, and Human Sciences. UT System Interim President Randy Boyd will make closing remarks and call for any questions you may have. Once again, welcome and a special thank you to UT's Howard H. Baker Jr. Center for Public Policy for hosting everyone today. Commissioner Schwinn. Good afternoon. I am thrilled to be here to talk about what an amazing program um, we have in the partnership between Knox County Schools and UT Knoxville. A couple of months ago, the department rolled out Tennessee Best for All, our strategic plan. And one of the priorities there is focusing on educators, making sure that Tennessee is the number one place in the country to become and remain a teacher. And what we know to be true is that right now in our state, we have 1,100 vacancies. And that means 13,000 students do not have a credentialed math teacher. We also know that many of our districts every single day and every single year are searching for the right educators to educate their children the most important thing that they can be doing. With this partnership between UT Knoxville and Knox County Schools, we are seeing innovation and leadership in a way that we haven't seen before. And when we think about Grow Your Own and what that means for educators, we have to take a big step back and say that many of our teachers right now, when they're in school, they are unpaid, they are working in classrooms, and like many of us, getting second and third jobs overnight to be able to pay for tuition and housing and costs like that. With Grow Your Own, what we are enabling and supporting our future educators to do is to get their credential, their undergraduate and their credential, uh, at no cost. They are studying under a mentor or a master teacher. They are able to get years in the pension system and health care benefits. So when you compare the two, when you think about that teacher who's working overnight trying to pay their bills and become um, a future educator, and now you have someone who's been studying under the best of the best for years before their first day, not only do we have more and more folks in the field, but we've essentially eliminated what it means to be a first-year teacher. There's no such thing as a first-year teacher because our new first-year teachers have been in the classroom for three years. What I'm also excited to be able to talk about today is that the department is announcing a $1 million program. What that will do is it statewide, it will provide teachers to get their special education endorsement for free. So for those educators in the room today who are currently in their program, yep, there, <laughs> you will be able to get your special education endorsement for free, tuition reimbursed um, in this new $1 million grant that will be launched statewide. Um, one of the things that we're also excited about is to be able to um, support UT Knox um, and to support Knox County Schools in terms of providing Grow Your Own partnerships at the local level. So they will be able now to support teachers in their local communities, um, building from their existing students to do exactly what we know is the most important work, and that's educating our students. With that, I am thrilled to be able to turn it over um, to Superintendent Thomas to talk about this incredibly innovative program and thank him for his work. Good afternoon. <laughs> what a, gosh, just such a historic moment for Knox County Schools. I just could not be more proud, and I know our folks, to be a part of this great moment in the history of our school system. Um, you know, we've, uh, we've come a long way, but there's still a long way to go, and uh, we're just so excited about the partnership, uh, President Boyd and Dean McIntyre and also Commissioner Swin and our governor, uh, Governor Lee, for allowing us to to be a participant, be a partner in this program. So we start the year off every year with uh, a number of vacancies, especially in uh, special education. Uh, so it's becoming more difficult to find teachers um, and to hire teachers. So th what this is going to help us to do is it's going to provide a pipeline uh, for us. It's going to allow us to fill the positions that, uh, that we have, the vacancies, as well as build a pipeline of well-prepared teachers because, as Commissioner has said many times, our students, our children deserve 
a highly effective teacher in every one of their classrooms. So uh, this is going to allow us to do this. This is going to allow uh, our board. Our board has three goals, increase student achievement, build a positive culture, eliminate disparities uh, with our subgroups. Uh, this is going to help us to to achieve those goals, so we're just super excited. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the program in just a minute, but I want to recognize our board. Uh, we have several board members here, and without our board, this would not be possible. So our board uh, uh, is so innovative, so progressive. They're so receptive to new ideas that help solve problems, and they're also so student-oriented. And um, every time we get together, we talk about ways to make Knox County uh, better and improve our, our, our system for our students. So Mrs. Susan Horn, Mrs. Horn is our board chair, so thank you for being here. Mrs. Virginia Babb, Ms. Babb is vice chair of the board. Ms. Patty Bounds, uh, representing District 7, and Ms. Evity Satterfield, representing District 1, and Ms. Christy Christie, representing District 9. So thank you, uh, board members, for being here. Also, I'd like to thank uh, a lot of our Knox County staff. Uh, folks are here, too, so uh, just like to thank them for uh, coming out on a uh, rainy afternoon, that's kind of been the norm here lately, isn't it, rainy, so uh, so uh, in keeping with that. And then uh, talking with President Boyd here just a minute ago, I uh, don't want to steal a line from him, but, you know, he said every time we get together, something good is happening. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, we, we decided we're going to get together more often. So uh, we're looking forward to uh, the move that's going to be uh, into the TVA East Tower. We're going to be partners with President Boyd in, uh, in some of his uh, administrative staff. Staff, so we're looking forward to the, to, to that partnership uh, as well. So many great things in working with the, the university uh, here that's uh, just so close to us. And let me just say, too, for from the standpoint of the students, uh, this is going to be a win-win-win. It's a win for Department of Education because we're getting more well-trained teachers. It's going to be a win for UT because the students who are majoring in education are going to be able to uh, to, to um, actually have a job that pays uh, when it's been an unpaid situation. And our students are going to be, because we're going to have highly effective teachers uh, in every one of our classrooms. So um, uh, the way this will work, uh, we will have 10 to 15 positions that um, for UT Knoxville students who are majoring in education. Uh, and we will start this next fall. We will hire uh, there will be a paid position, be a paraprofessional position, so we're going to pay uh, 10 to 15 students who would be in their internship year uh, here at the university. So uh, again, it will be a paid position. It will come with benefits, and also uh, the students will be eligible to be earning some time toward uh, their retirement. So uh, again, a lot of times maybe students would not be able to afford to work in an unpaid position. So uh, it's going to be great from that standpoint, and, and again, to allow us to uh, to build that pipeline. So what happens after year one, phase one, this teacher, uh, this teacher cohort? Uh, what happens after phase one, pending a, 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 an acceptable performance in a paraprofessional position that they will be in, also uh, depending uh, graduation from the university and also pending appropriate licensure from the State Department of Tennessee, uh, guess what? We're going to offer them a job. So uh, <laughs> they'll be able to come work uh, uh, for Knox County as a teacher. And, uh, uh, you know, our st starting salary is not where it needs to be. It's really close to $40,000. Uh, I think we're maybe a couple of hundred dollars away from that $40,000, which, uh, you know, Governor Lee had said in his budget he'd like to have beginning teachers across the state making uh, $40,000. So um, so they'll get, they'll get a teaching uh, uh, position. And that, again, help us by, by filling the vacancies the, that we've had uh, with special ed and, and also expanding upon uh, into other areas as well, uh, starting out with, with special education because of the critical need there. So, again, we're just uh, super excited uh, about this opportunity. I'd like to thank President Boyd, Dean McIntyre, Commissioner Swin again, and, and, and Governor Lee um, for, for working with us and allowing this partnership to uh, to uh, form and to continue and to exist. So uh, at this point in time, I will turn it over to Dean McIntyre. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Superintendent Thomas and Commissioner Schwinn. Um, I am so pleased to be here. This is actually my seventh week in Tennessee. And boy, did I come at the right time. There's an amazing amount of incredible work happening statewide right now here in Knox County and, of course, in, at the University of Tennessee, state system-wide, 
um, at UT Knoxville and even in my own College of Education, Health and Human Sciences. It's the most exciting time, really, um, that I've experienced. And a lot of it has to do with these great opportunities. Um, I am so thrilled to be part of this Grow Your Own. When I first arrived, Associate Dean David Chiak, who had been working already with Knox County um, folks to develop this incredible program. What's hap what, what this program will do, will, will it will provide those people trained to be elementary teachers to also have a special education endorsement. That is critical because we need more special education teachers in Knox County and across the state of Tennessee. Um, and of course, you've already heard it, they don't have to pay their tuition. They'll be working while they're getting this degree and working in the context in which they'll be learning how to teach. Uh, if there's no other better way to prepare teachers. So I couldn't be more excited about this. Um, I'm grateful for all the people who have been involved in this. And I just can't wait to see what happens next. Um, I'm going to introduce um, President Boyd, who has been a longtime champion of education, um, particularly here in Tennessee and locally. So, Randy. Thank, thank you, Dean. I'm excited to be here with this great group of people again. Um, so I apologize, Dean McIntyre, that you've had to wait so long, seven weeks before you had an educational announcement in Knox County, because we do this about every month. Uh, I think within the last six months, uh, uh, Superintendent Thomas and I have been on a stage to talk about 10,000 Tennessee Achieve students in just Knox County alone going on to college. We were uh, also introducing something called the Knox Promise, which is providing additional support for students that are into college to make sure they're successful. We we uh, didn't really share a podium, but we kind of shared a county commission meeting room where we got to announce that we're going to be co-locating together. And I'm hopeful that co-location actually does result in even more collaboration. We've had a history of collaboration for decades, and I think this is going to take it to yet another le uh, level. So the, uh, the water cooler literally will be shared, and we'll be seeing each other on a, on a regular basis. I just want to say a, a few thank yous. Thank you to Governor Lee. Thank you to Commissioner Swin for this incredible initiative, this incredible partnership. Thank you, uh, Superintendent Thomas and the Knox County School Board for supporting uh, this partnership. And thanks to everybody at the University of Tennessee and Dean McIntyre for being such a cooperative uh, partner. I also want to thank three, I'll take personal privilege and say three other personal thank yous uh, to Mr. Rector, uh, Mrs. Jones, and Mr. Kennedy. So these are my school teachers at Dwell High School. Uh, Mr. Rector was my English teacher. And one time, he was, always encouraged me in, in English literature to, to, to be a better writer. And he always made me believe that I was better than I probably was. And I remember one time when I did a really poor job on a, on a paper, and he brought me afterwards in, after, after class and said, I'm going to let you do this again, because you can do much better work. And I'm not sure I could or not, but he believed in me. Same thing with Mrs. Jones. I remember this one particular time in algebra in sophomore year, and I failed, I didn't fail a test, I missed a question on a test. And I was just really distraught. I was kind of high strung and emotional, imagine that. But, uh, and, and she brought me aside and said, you know, this isn't really the end of the world. You can do okay, and you can do better, but, and you'll get another chance to, to make this up. And then Mr. Kennedy and Superintendent Thomas, you might remember your former superintendent, uh, Margaret Doyle, that created something called the Doyle Middle School. It was an open classroom, and I was the first one in eighth grade to go to this open classroom environment. And I was kind of distracted easily, so I didn't do very well. So about three years later, I'm at Doyle High School, and some friends of mine created something called PIG, the Political Involvement Group. And the first project we decided to take on was to determine whether an open classroom was a good idea or not. So on our own, one afternoon, we decided to take a little survey and go around and interview all the school, all the teachers at the, uh, the middle school and got some fairly negative comments. Then we put little surveys in all the teachers' cubby holes at the high school to see what they thought about the environment over at the middle school. Apparently, this didn't go down very well with the superintendent of schools when she found out. Uh, but Mr. Kennedy was our sponsor, and he supported us and backed us the whole way. So when I think about this program and being able to recruit a new group of teachers like Mr. Jones, or Ms. Jones and Mr. Rector and Mr. Kennedy, it means so much to me personally, to so much of our kids. You know, we, here's our problem we have to solve. In 1975, 22% of the majors were education. Today, it's down to 10%. We have a huge shortage in education majors. I think this program, this partnership will help us go a long ways to solving it. So I'm so excited about everybody that's participating in this and partnering and looking forward to so many other initiatives like this in the future. Thank you all and I think now we have some time for questions. Thank you. A 
But we, we started out the year, and I'm not sure, Scott, would you give a number for me on 98 vacancies uh, and across the board? Was that just that was special ed and, and across the board? So 98, 98 vacancies uh, starting out the school year. Also, we had some difficulty filling paraprofessional uh, positions as well. I think the second semester we're, we were a little bit better, but, but again, just the pipeline coming to us is just not sufficient. To, to fill the vacancies that we that we have. So again, that's what, what we believe with this program is gonna help us tremendously and, and over time, but it's gonna start helping us fall of, of 20 and then the subsequent year, 21, 22, so. I just wanna follow up on that. Can you describe what you mean by paraprofessional positions? What does it entail? Oh yes, uh, uh, good question. Uh, paraprofessional positions, teacher assistant positions. Uh, we've got teacher posi uh, assistant positions in uh, and, and all of our schools, elementary primarily, more heavily uh, populated in elementary, but also uh, special education program, a lot of teacher assistants in their situations where uh, you have to have a teacher and then also to have a TA you know, with that teacher or a teacher assistant. So those would be the paraprofessional positions. That's, that's the focus right now, but, uh, but uh, as we progress through the program, then it will be expanded. Uh, I know sometimes, especially in the sciences, chemistry, physics, uh, also mathematics, uh, language arts are some of the, uh, not language arts, but foreign language um, are some of the areas where we experience uh, difficulty in, in getting teacher, uh, finding teacher applicants. Uh, oh gosh, Mr. Bolton, have you got to, uh, uh, let me refer that to our HR. Plus uh, the opportunity to participate in health insurance and then uh, uh, retirement, which is the Tennessee Consolidated Retirement System. The way, the way the program currently works with the, the fifth year, the interns, right, correct. Mm -hmm. And then the following year, uh, pending uh, satisfactory performance as a paraprofessional position and the licensure piece and the degree, uh, then they would be the, become teacher of the record. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, again, we're looking at several uh, different programs, I guess, from the standpoint, uh, you know, of the Grow Your Own. Um, and also we're looking at uh, maybe in a couple of our high schools to, to have a, um, to establish a teacher preparation program for students who would become interested in becoming teachers. So our, our interest and focus is to take it, to take it down to the high school level and, and uh, again start uh, uh, with students who have that interest, uh, developing that interest and then helping them in terms of becoming uh, a, a student in an educational program uh, here at the university. And also, the, uh, they're eligible, uh, some students will be eligible for full scholarships. So. And to be clear, the, the funding for this stipend will come from the state funds that talking about? No, this, this will be Knox County, uh, again, because we typically start the year out with vacant positions. So uh, the way that helps us is, is to have folks to fill those positions that would normally remain remain vacant. They're budgeted, uh, budgeted positions, obviously, so, um, but they're vacant. So this will, having this program will allow us to actually uh, pay, pay the paraprofessional, uh, the salary. When you pay these teachers, do they have to be, uh, is it a bachelor's degree or do they have to be master's degree? Uh, on the fifth year program, master's degree is what, what you end up, I think, with uh, once you complete the program. Thank you.